Hello. This is One Great Earth. My name is Dan. I hope you're well. We got quite a bit that we can get into today. There's been a lot of talk about Project 2025. We're going to talk about why that matters for the climate. We have a couple of article stories to go with that. Just me rambling here wildly. I do have, you know, stories that I curate. I appreciate for joining me. If you haven't already, please click the follow button. I appreciate it tremendously. So, This isn't in a bid to control the actual weather. But rather, well, I'll just get into it here. By Zoe Schlanger from The Atlantic. MAGA plan to end free weather reports. Project 2025 would all but dissolve the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Right, so listen, does it work? Nope. In the United States, as in much most other countries, weather forecasts are a freely accessible government the National Weather Service issues alerts and predictions warning of hurricanes and excessive heat and rainfall. All of the total costs to the American taxpayers are roughly $4 per person per year. But, you know, what you're getting out of that is saving lives. You, people understand flooding risks understand the local risk to going outside whenever it's the day that is being urged to stay indoors due to let's say localized flooding and flash flooding you don't want to be caught in a vehicle in flooded water it only takes three inches or so of water to carry your car away with you inside it you might think that car is very heavy but it doesn't take that much to displace and suddenly it just pops up. If you've never experienced a car pop up before, it's something wild. I've, um, when I was in, when I used to have a Crown Victoria, 1991 Crown Victoria, giant black, Polaris nuclear submarine. I hit my whole front end of my car went up, came right back down. You don't know what's under the water. You know, it might not be a deep puddle, but it could be broken up concrete in there or something. Whatever the, whatever the matter that caused my car to up this was years ago this is so many years ago 
But it was one of the only accidents I've been in. It wasn't really an accident. I hit something on the side of the road and it just... Just my car, I just remember like, whoa! Uh, now you want to know if there's flash flooding for other reasons besides just for driving. But it's most important to know where the flash flooding is going to be localized around you if you do have to be driving around, if you do have to be outside. Getting your car towed away out of the highway flooded is thousands of dollars. It will save you money to not drive in the flood. It will save your life to stay out of the flood water. You can't drive through it. And if you can, you're not going to drive for the next one. There will be a limit. There's always a limit. Cars are not on the street capable of wading through two feet of water. If the freeways fill up, that's your window. You can't drive through that. Instead, you wait until the tow can get your car out of there. Not out of request from you. They're going to tow your car, and then you're going to have to pay the bill, whatever it is. It's monstrous. The bills that I've seen are thousands and thousands of dollars just to get your car out, which still doesn't work. I mean, it's in the condition that it was in when they pulled it out of the flood. So the car is not going to be in the best shape. So let's say you pay $4,600 to get your car out of, uh, out of tow pound. You still have to pay to fix it. Whatever it might be, might be everything. <laughs> it's it's such a horrible river loss. So, but knowing that you know losing your vehicle in flood water is a huge risk that I don't think people should be taking, even when they think they're gonna okay, it's only under this viaduct or you know rail or whatever overhead. You just go under, like that might might only be a couple of inches or more. All it takes was what we're saying. It only takes three inches of water for your car to just go bloop. Until you felt it, the uh, loss of control in your vehicle due to severe weather. You're either having a tornado around you suddenly. You know, these things happen. Make you respect being out there on the road with a lot of other motorists that don't know what the hell they're doing in inclement weather. They start hearing tornado sirens and they turn on their car radio. Very strange. I've driven with a lot of people. Uh, not really a brag or anything. I really have. All kinds of types of work. I digress. Been reflecting a lot lately due to reapplying to go to school, go back to college, mechanical engineering. The thing that I haven't done that you know keeps me up at night is this degree. I don't have that much to go based on what I'm seeing, but I still want to do this show regardless and see where I can take it. But we'll see. School comes first, obviously. To Compared to this show, yeah, it would definitely be priority. But would I go to three days a week instead of five days a week? I try to go live at 5.30 p.m. Eastern each day. You know, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes they're just, you know, sometimes it's rough. I'm in rough shape and I don't want to be on camera because, you know, when I'm in that condition, that state, where I can be angry or mad or just manic, 
you know, I, I tend to stay away from people. I tend to stay away from people I know and love. As a result is them being afraid. You know, there is nothing to be afraid of. They don't want to make me upset. Not that I have, I rage. But I've been through a, a, a lot over the last few years. And, uh, you know, people tell me that PTSD would have a lot to do with it and they don't want to trigger. Which I understand more, because at first I would think that I'm not going to flap the handles. I complain extensively, but usually my behavior isn't as uh, rude. They can be very dismissive, very rude, I can say, when I'm suffering. People look at me and they wonder what's wrong. Are you okay? I tell them I'm fine. Fine. But what happens when I lock up? I had surges with interrupting thoughts because of the OCD. And I find it very difficult to focus. It harms me, my productivity due to the ADHD. A complicated cycle where nothing gets done and then you're wondering at the end of the night, what, why did you do that? Why didn't you do this? Because you thought you had so many other things to do. But it's important to take note but not make lists. Little, little fundamental changes like that would have helped me a long time ago. Instead of making lists. Just the things to do, skills that I want to obtain, you know, things like that. Just in my 20s, roaring, just. But it becomes difficult, becomes complicated. Uh, people wonder if I'm okay. Uh, what they're seeing reading on my face pain. I, I would I don't disagree with the people that see my face and they think that I'm in a lot of pain because that's precisely what it is. It's a lot of anguish. I suffer greatly. As I know a lot of people do. But it's it's different when you try to be consistent you really see just how inconsistent you become. I've been trying to do this at 5.30 p.m. every day, Monday through Friday, and it's not that there is a lack of news. There should never be a day where I come here at 5.30 and I don't have some 20 to 30 tabs open and I'm wondering which ones to do first, which ones to do last. I just have to make sure that my data is right on the stream and that category is talk show and podcast. Okay. My intention is to read the news, share the news, hear these reports, and not go overly political. I generally don't like talking about politics. It only seems that uh, one time out of the year people really want to talk about politics and if I just, you know, hide from strangers, I'll be fine. I'm not saying I'm being hunted. Generally, uh, I've met 
far too many people that are very confrontational when it comes to talking about politics. That's hard. Because, you know, it's definitely somebody you know. And to make it just absolutely impossible to be around the person because they can just snap. Get really angry no matter what the condition of the economy. But again, not a channel about would be macroeconomics, but I, I don't want to get into that right now. But it's real hard to reach out for help. Mental health is very important. I went through a period of time last year where I was very mentally unhealthy and through a lot. I'm not trying to have a pass or uh, make excuses. But I've been able to do this at 5.30 every day and that alone right there is that's enough for me to say that I've I've done the best that I could. And I, I think that's important. Everybody wants to be told you've done the best that you could. Because the best that you had is different. The best that you could, what I think is the compliment. That people acknowledging it was the best that you had. Compared to best you could do. Quite flattering. There is that distinction. Please note. So, what this article is saying is that uh, you go to AccuWeather or any of the other popular Weather apps, weather services. Hard right policymakers want to privatize privatize NOAA, privatize the National Weather Service reports. So you can't just go, oh, look at this. I'm going on spc.noaa.gov. I can look at tomorrow's outlook. I can look at the fire weather tomorrow and today and three-day outlook, three to eight-day outlook. I can look at thunderstorms the next day. And I can look at the uh, how much rain is going to be in the next day or so. Also, there's going to be storms. I can see the storm here. I can see, you know, it's, this is uh, spc.noaa.gov. Great tool if you want to look at weather casually. Uh, you look at your state and you say, oh, there's a storm above me at 8 p.m. Okay. It's good to know. It's good to know. First, it suggests the National Weather Service should eliminate its public-facing forecast, focus on data gathering, otherwise fully commercialized its forecasting options. This would be detrimental to even services that are paid right now. This would change the industry completely. There would be a different bottom. There would be a different free, if you know what I mean. The tiers. Tiered weather support. Do you want local? Do you want national? Do you want to know what's going on in North Africa? Temperatures in North India? These things would start changing, costing money. And different weather services, different climate services reporting different information, it would just violate everything. 
everything would be just thrown out of whack. This would be a complete industry changer, but not in a good way. It would ruin a lot of progress. It would ruin a lot of plans for people. But if you don't know what the next two to three days of weather is going to be like, and you have plans for an outdoor event, well, you got to pay five ninety nine a week to be able to have that weather. You know, that's what we're talking about here. We're not talking about anything else other than there is a movement to stop the free weather supports or at least the public facing reports with the National Weather Service. Don't know why this is popular, why it's a thing. Why in Project 2025, uh, NOAA should be dismantled and many of its functions eliminated, sent to other agencies, privatized, or placed under the control of state and territories. This is everything in Project 2025. I I've had this picture saved. I don't know, don't remember where I first saw it from, but I definitely saved it. This is Project 2025. Uh, it's huge. It's a lot. It's um, an omnibus of conservative think tank and uh, demagogues that have put in money and time to have this giant bill after bill after bill sponsored all at once. Passes also. You know, everything sucks. Trump constantly says that he is not for Project 2025, but we all know that he is a known liar. They the least. No reason to believe that he doesn't understand it. Considering that he uh, there is undercover footage that shows him not condemning it, but condoning it. He's fine with it. He'll sign whatever giant conservative omnibus as soon as he gets into power. Because he knows in return, he's going to give everybody a lot of big tax cuts. What this is all about is people's bottom line and money. And if it feels like the voters are getting in between the money, capital, and these companies. That is when we're going to start seeing a real change. Instead of seeing a CEO like Elon Musk able to pay out $45 million a month to Donald Trump. When I know people that are brilliant but struggle through college, struggle through school, only being able to take X amount of classes because they can really only afford to do that either because they're working and they have to work or they just can't get the funds to be able to go to school, take the classes the way they, you know, probably should have. Because the way I take classes, I take three or four. I, I usually take at least 12 credit hours and uh, pretty deep in credits for mechanical engineering a lot of cnc classes cnc programming i'm capable of doing a lot of work but due to my mental illness it makes acquiring a job difficult and it made acquiring keeping these jobs previously very very hard It's not that I don't want to work, that I don't know if it's okay if I work. I really... The rejection based on my mental stability, what I'm afraid of, even though that as long as I take my medication and the therapy every week, I should be fine, right? It's nothing personal. I feel that a lot of people will 
not read about Project 2025, but know that Trump's for it, and that'll be all they need to know. Him sponsoring Project 2025. Enough for MAGA. Enough to go through with this terrible stripping of everything. We're seeing conservatives in the Argentina. Uh, Javier Malay, the uh, current president of Argentina. If you want to take a look at Argentina and what they're being faced with now, not good. If you want to see what Project 2025 is going to bring, pay attention to Argentina. Because a lot of these giant changes are already happening in the state. Two thousand seventeen Trump and MAGA wanted to disable satellites that track pollution. You understand what's at stake here. It's not just my man is right for the job. I know the person best to be president. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about that person actively wanting to destroy a free service that you've been using your entire life, but never realize, oh, this is what he's talking about ending. This is what the whole Project 2025 is talking about ending, about uh, NOAA in the NWS, the National Weather Service. Like... Why isn't there the first thought, like, well, why would they want to end free weather reports? That should be the logical first thought. It's like, okay, so what do they have against these free weather reports? Well, that's the thing. They want to privatize everything. And by that, it's charging you service that you've been receiving free your entire lives. Now, I think that would be more of a scam. Is that homeowners like, oh, set, like a, based on a, a homeowner account. Say that your whole family can know the weather for tomorrow. If you pay X amount of money. It's, it's get, it can get really out of hand. Really fast. And we really don't want to see that kind of future. Because anybody that goes to windy.com or zoom.earth anything with weather and radar that's going to be eliminated and I know a lot of people that have remarked on their casual use of these radar systems and such the National Weather Service provides We're experiencing these amazing, well, not amazing, these large heat domes that just sit over parts of the country, parts of the world, generating lots of energy and heat, rising the temperatures of our oceans. At what point do you want NOAA to not talk? Do you want NOAA to not report on pollution, report on our ozone. NOAA even predicts space weather. Yep. NOAA does a lot. And you don't want that service to be free, right? I don't think charging for this service is not the question of who collects this money who gets some money. It's ending an entire industry. And it's it's a lot. Privatizing the weather is not a new conservative aim. Nearly two decades ago, when the National Weather Service updated its website to be more user-friendly, Barry Myers, then executive vice president of AccuWeather, complained to the press 
we work very hard every day competing with other companies and we have to compete with the government. Yeah. Thankfully that bill never made it out of, out of committee. Rick Santorum was the one that introduced the bill to cease competition with the private sector. You want to privatize, but you want to tell people where they can go, where to shop. You want to tell the shops which ones can stay open. This is not capitalism. This is not privatization. It's literally becoming a juggernaut overnight, is the case. I, I can't imagine... It being good for the industry, like I said, this would be incredibly detrimental to the industry as we know it. Being able to have free weather reports. Is your TV still going to be able to give you free weather reports? If the government has to reserve their weather reports for commercial providers only, does that mean that your local news affiliate will not be able to give you the weather tonight because they're being charged too much? a really dystopian kind of uh, paths that we could take. We don't have to take. Understand? We don't have to privatize the weather. We don't have to privatize every p bit of industry possible. You want to privatize something but not regulate it and watch it crash. Never forget that Trump and co. wanted to end satellites, disable satellites that track pollution. Why do you think that would be? I'm not going to get into any specifics. Right now we're talking about NOAA, talking about National Weather Service, talking about why is such a huge focus of free weather reports that you want people to turn on the TV is that it could be part of it ad driven weather news network having people sit through at least free ads or something to be able to find uh, finally get the weather it's asking a lot give up a lot of freedoms a lot of free services don't know how good of a system it is that we have right now how robust it is how weather reporting is probably the best I've ever seen you, there are so many different services so many different sites so many different streamers that cover the news local to you I bet Find, always find at least one person that is covering the news local to you, I think. And I don't mean that as in like a TV weather person. I mean somebody that covers your region probably on YouTube, which... So, uh, Project 2025 poses a dramatically defunded NOAA. So, it's not just that you're privatizing the industry, you're privatizing this uh, service. You're defunding the actual service that has to deal with weather reporting and research and space weather without a replacement. And so this is a problem with conservatives is that they're quick to sponsor, quick to put their name on these very extreme bills. But there is no plan B. Like, okay, if this goes through, then we're going to be able to do instead. Get ripped off, scammed instead, because we're going to have to start paying for weather reports. Even the ones on the news, uh, it's not going to be free for everyone. 
you're gonna have to have a subscription here a subscription there for local for regional you don't want this nobody wants this a very small amount of people wants this and those people should not matter in the grand scheme of what the National Weather Service does for everybody what kind of information it gives us we can't have a loss of that nature and just having three to five minute warning the tornado warning there is a tornado warning that is confirmed tornado you know and those updates are sent to you locally on your cell phone you understand what you would be losing here instead of be you didn't pay your monthly bill for your weather service so you didn't get the remote updates pushed updates there's just so many reasons why this is a bad idea why project 2025 is a bad idea and why you should not trust Donald Trump when he says he doesn't know anything about it false we don't want to wait around for conservatives to know that he's not playing with this. Can't find the article, but he did come out in support of it already. This would just screw everything up. World Meteorological Organization, which allows the U.S. to access to a suite of other countries' weather models. Where we get mad when the weather, the other com countries do the same and pull their weather, free weather updates out of everything. This helps nobody. It only helps a very tiny amount of people that are undoubtedly very rich. As a result of that, they want to increase their bottom line without expending cost. You make, a con you make an entity that already does the service for free, you make it you price people out there's now a cost you have to have a cable subscription for a weather channel not just the weather channel but it's uh very strange wanting to end free weather reports because it's not just ending Free weather ports. They want to privatize it and they want to make it complicated. They want to make it difficult. They want to make you pay for it. They believe that what has been going on has been a free ride and they want to end that free ride. But again, it's a very tiny amount of people that benefit this from this and that really would want this but it changes so much to everyone else that depends on it on all scales like objectively it's a bad idea you want to privatize weather reports you want to stop the National Weather Service having public facing weather reports what does that even mean and who gets it just the government only and why privatize it if nobody can have it 
this doesn't make sense and there is going to be a tremendous amount of coverage on this as elections continue but you know this is not something that we can ignore it's too much at risk it's satellites it's coverage it's radar a lot of technology that we would be throwing away if we elected another Donald Trump that just cannot happen please just please think about it if you could not just look at your phone two minutes and get weather that you had additional steps additional premium app that you would need to be able to download and install and run separately and pay separately where would this end who would be charging and where would the money be going to it's unbelievable that it's gotten this far that we're about to risk losing three weather reports Love you, baby. More than 320 wildfires burn in British Columbia as Barkerville Wells ordered to evacuate. This is from citynews.canada, Vancouver. More than 20 wildfires were sparked on Sunday alone. The British Columbia Wildfire Service dashboard says has two dozen one-day heat Records fell and multiple towns in the Caribou were ordered to evacuate.
So here is the map here of uh, 326 wildfires that are burning across the province. Setting new heat records, causing a firestorm. Canada is already seeing record amounts of smoke. You see here, harmful air quality. Pretty massive stretch. Pretty intense amount of particulates, aerosolized particulates in the air above British Columbia and Northwest Territories to Alberta, Canada. Pretty intense amount of particulates in the air.
thank you for joining me. Even if you're watching this on YouTube, I am live on Twitch. And I upload this onto YouTube afterwards. Watching this on Twitch, would appreciate it greatly. To give me a follow, appreciate it greatly. This is uh, British Columbia Wildfire, Spence's Bridge. Your two wildfires merge. You from Ashcroft. <laughs> By Thursday morning, the merged fire was believed to be 4,125 hectares in size. Almost eight times larger than it was Wednesday night. Greece tests thousands of animals after goat plague outbreak. More than 16,500 goats and sheep have been tested for a viral infection known as goat plague in central Greece after nine animals tested positive last week in farming units in the area, government officials have said. Greece first detected the outbreak of the virus. SD tests Tits ruminants, also known as PPR or goat plague, on July 11th. So far, about 2,500 animals have been called, all in affected farms in the regions of Larissa and Trakala. A total of 16,500 have been tested. Governments of spokesmen. Pavlos orders. The virus causes fever, sores and lesions, laboring, breathing, diarrhea, and infected animals. It poses no threat to human health.
Okay, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining me. I will be calling the stream here. If you haven't already, please click the follow button on Twitch. I appreciate it greatly. Uh, I will see you again. Try to go live by 30 p.m. every day. Every weekday, I should say. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Please take care.